So there's been a couple of adjustments to the scheduling and the timing. The CNCF listed us as starting at 8 o'clock. That was actually when registration opened. And then on the website, it said 9 o'clock. And then it said we started talking at 9.30. And, you know, it's fluid. This is community. So my name's Diane Mueller. Uh, I'm the Director of Community Development at Red Hat for the Cloud Platform Group and for OpenShift and operators and all kinds of other wonderful projects that we're working on. Um, and I really have to say thank you for coming to today's OpenShift Commons gathering here at KubeCon um, because you had lots of other choices. There's, we have Red Hatters speaking in, in like four other rooms in other topics on security. Um, we have an operator framework workshop in the other room. There's lots going on today. So for you to make the choice to come here, we're grateful. And we're grateful for those of you who are sharing your stories today. So um, we're going to get started uh, with a little bit of um, what is Commons, who we are, and what we're going to do today. And I'm going to bring up one of my uh, fellow researchers to talk a little bit about um, cross-community collaboration um, to get us started. The agenda, like I said, is a little fluid. Um, we are going to have an update from a couple of the PMs um, who are still not in the room yet, but I think they're in the lineup outside, so that's what I mean by fluid. Um, and depending on whether or not the Azure team shows up, we may slide in the Azure um, talk as well. Um, and we have then normally what we do at OpenShift Commons gatherings is we do the updates, we get that stuff over with, and we try and get um, all of our um, people who are using um, OpenShift to tell their stories because the OpenShift community is really about um, what you guys are doing with OpenShift and Kubernetes and all of the other projects that are wrapped around that. So we have a number of really cool talks, um, though those may be a little fluid too. So um, we'll see how all of this goes today. And then in the afternoon, we'll kick it off with something that's um, been sort of the hot topic for um, the Kubernetes space um, operators and the operator framework and operator hub. Rob Sumsky is here. Um, so we may switch him in earlier if the other folks didn't. And then we've asked a number of people who have built operators to come on stage to talk about what's, um, what it took to build those operators, why they built them, um, and just share their stories about that. Um, and then we're going to have a quick talk about um, Knative, Istio, and all of that goodness. And then we have really, I'm very grateful, uh, two folks coming to talk about um, container security. And we will do Q&A, but we will probably do most of the Q&A in what we call our AMA session at the end. What I'll try and do is bring all the Red Hatters who have spoken and a few others who are shy um, and drag them onto stage. And we'll do Q&A to end, end the day so you'll get a chance. I'm a little loud. I feel like I have a huge echo in this room. This room is a cavern. Uh, they tell me they do car shows here, so I feel like there should be automotives on the floor or something. Um, and then we'll end um, with Brian Gracely. He's going to talk a little bit about the road ahead. Um, and Brian is our director of product strategy for OpenShift. So he'll give you some insights into where we're going um, for the day. So again, thank you all for coming. Um, and at the end of the day, all of the folks that are in the operator framework um, group have been invited to come over here. So there's about 100 more people who um, hopefully do that. Because my real goal today is to give you some facial recognition of each other um, and of some of the Red Hatters who are going to be here. Because this, I, I heard tell that there were at least 8,000 people coming to KubeCon. Um, and it's probably gone up higher than that. Um, I'm not sure exact, the, what the exact final registration is. And that's a really big number of people to try and manage um, meeting and greeting. So what I really hope you get out of today is that you meet and greet each other here today, get some facial recognition going, um, uh, find a buddy so you don't get lost. Um, and on that note, uh, the food is going to be served for us in this room so th for lunches. So, and the coffee breaks will be in this room so you don't have to go wandering about this wonderful, huge warehouse facility. Um, that we're in, which is very nice, and we're grateful for the space. But um, so it, you'll be in this room for the whole day. 
There are bathrooms on either side, I'm told. You can go wander and find those during the breaks or whenever you need a bio break, so do that. But what I really do ask is that you mix it up and you meet new people. Don't just sit with the same folks all day long. Try and meet a few folks. Because um, OpenShift uh, Commons is the community for OKD, which is our OpenShift uh, um, open source project. Um, and it's all of our customers, the upstream project folks, um, all of the partners that we have. A number of them are the, some of the people that are written the operators and others. So there's a lot of you um, here. There are over 500 member organizations. OpenShift Commons is an organization-based membership, so you join once and anyone from that company can join from um, the CEO down to the um, coders to whomever. So it's really pretty open, um, and if you're into it. So I need to usually tell a little bit of a story about what is OpenShift Commons because um, it's not your typical um, open source community because we try and embrace everybody from not just the upstream and contributors, which is what normally we're trying to get you all to contribute code to our uh, code base and give us feedback and log issues and do all that good stuff. But really what we're trying to do is create a new sort of peer-to-peer -peer communication model for you to use Slack, the mailing list, this, um, the special interest groups we've set up and everything else so that you can connect with each other and in some ways Red Hat just gets out of the, the story. So um, that's why this is pretty new to us. It, we started it about three years ago when we pivoted from being a platform as a service that was built on um, uh, a Ruby and Rails, uh, MongoDB thing. You remember the old paws and gears and cartridges? How many people remember a gear and a cartridge? Yes, I'm, yeah. That car mo metaphor has almost gone away. Um, but when we pivoted to Kubernetes, it became such a big architectural shift that we had to do something different. We had to figure out how to get the new information out to everybody. And there's Daniel, yay. Thank you for coming. And um, so we did this big shift to going very virtual, to being very, um, uh, very much more um, promoting the peer-to-peer -peer connection so that we would only have to tell the story of what's in the next release once maybe twice, maybe three times, as opposed to going um, to 20 conferences and to hundreds of customers. We tried to do things virtually. We created the Slack channel, which if you want to get into, see me at the, um, in any of the breaks and we'll set you up. Um, there's a whole YouTube channel. There's, uh, I think I've done almost 250 OpenShift Commons briefings with partners, with project leads, with end users, all kinds of people. There's tons of information and content out there, and if you want to tell your story, please let me know. I would happily um, do that. The Slack channel is great to get connected with people. The upcoming events is on commons.openshift.org. Um, it usually tells you, when, it, when you see something that says off the air, that usually means I finally took a vacation. Um, and if you want to join Commons, just join once. You'll, if you fill out the form on this, you'll get an um, automated email from me and all my contact details and one letter that you have to have your company sign. The one thing about OpenShift Commons that we've done is we um, don't have any anonymity. So you can't join as an individual. You need to join as your company using your corporate ID. And that has really changed um, the dynamics because you, we know who each other is um, on the mailing list and that, um, and that way you can identify um, someone you need to talk to or know when someone's trying to pitch you some salesware. But um, it has also changed the dynamics for us in the, in the whole um, universe of how we do our community development.